The people of Kenya up to the 19th century. Kushites and origins. Luanda is taking his day off to go into the city of Kisumu. On the Matatu, into town, he hears many Kenyan languages that are not Luo or Kiswahili, making him think about where all these people came from. Upon arriving, he accidentally wanders into a big building, not realizing it is one of the National Kenyan Museums. He doesn't realize where he is until it is too late. As he goes for the exit, a man stops him. Oh, hello there, young man. You must be here for the guided tour. Oh, uh, actually, I was just on my way out. Nonsense. It is 9 a.m. on the dot, and it looks like you are the only one here, which makes it a private tour, I guess. Uh, it's Saturday. And? N nothing, mister. L let's go. Great. I'm glad you accepted. Because usually no one here shows up. I wonder why. What? Never mind. Let's go. And call me Dr. Griffin. Griffin for short. I am Luanda. Luanda Maggetti. I have heard your tale. It is about the Luo fighting the Kalenjin who are to use this seed and a beautiful woman to bring him down. Oh, how our many different backgrounds have made such great stories. Do you know stories in other local languages as well? I heard a lot of different tongues on the bus ride in. Of course. I am a doctor, after all. The background of Kenya is a great and rich history important to knowing who we are today. Is this part of the tour? It is now. Follow me and keep quiet. Now, you must understand the Hoysan are the first group of people thought to inhabit Kenya. Followed by the southern Kushites, who pushed them out of the savannah grasslands. Southern? I only know of the eastern Kushites. Yes. It is believed the Bantu and Nilots absorbed the southern Kushites and assimilated them. This means these groups entered Kenya around the same time, being the first century. It wasn't until the mid-18th century that they were found to be settled around where they are today. Where did all these people appear from? Ask me something I don't know, young man. They all came from different directions, as you can see. The origins of the Kushites being from the Horn of Africa. The Bantus being from Niger, Chad, and Cameroon regions. And the Nilots came from the Nile Basin and the Southern Ethiopian region. All right, another question then. What about Mombasa and the coast? You haven't said anything about that yet. Easy, easy. The eighth century saw the beginning of Arab background arriving on the coast, and by the 14th century had a trading posts set up. Hence, this is why Kiswahili has Arabic background. Do you know the Arabic word for book? No, I'm a Kenyan. <laughs> of course. It is Kitab. Sounds familiar? Whoa, you are like a walking Wikipedia. Now, we have arrived at this month's special exhibit on the Eastern Kushites. No Southern because they are not around? Uh, the Sanye are believed to be the remainders of the southern Kushites, but very small group. Now, the eastern Kushites are groups such as Gala, Somali, Borana, among others. They moved from the Arabia to the Horn of Africa about 1000 BC and made their way into present-day Somalia, a northern part of Kenya. So, were they like part of the same team, since they were all Kushites? Well, not really. The Oromo and Somali had many conflicts about land that did not even get solved until the 20th century. The Oromo were so forceful, they even kicked the Bantu out of their coastal land. Wow. So why are they so keen to be moving if it results in violence? <laughs> You apparently don't have any siblings to share things with at home. A crowded area is always a good reason to move, 
give some what my Mzungu friend say, Elborum. Also, the area that I'd come from was very arid and desert-like. This led to many droughts, famine, and epidemics. This resulted in no pastures or water for livestock, so they needed a place to grow food. And the beckoning of exploration? Yes, that drove some people. That was a pull factor for some. But a major push factor was internal conflicts. But, wouldn't you know, conflict seems to follow. What? Are you trying to fight me, old man? Love to see you try. No, no, no. What I mean is that although the Kushites moved, they still found themselves fighting in a new land, as mentioned earlier with the Somali and Oromo. The Oromo forced the band to move, causing some displacement, and as a result, redistribution of populations. Well, was there any not bad effects? Uh, these new groups brought new ideas, and I guess that is a positive effect. This range from religion, such as Islam, to economic activities, leading to increased trade of both goods and culture. A few military alliances were formed too, like between Rendile and Samburu. But I don't know if that is a positive. I think that would foster relationships between tribes, like, like a marriage. You are absolutely right. And as the tribes settled, there was a lot of intermingling, which led to assimilation and adoption of communities and culture, like with the Bantu. Ban who? Really? You are pulling my leg. Yep, I know who they are. Tell me then. No, I, I really should be going. Time for free lunch? Okay, okay, I can stay. Hmm.